Hi, this is Dr. G. This is going to be a quick video with an explanation of why we sometimes have to have an absolute value when we are simplifying radical expressions with the variables in them. I got a question about it and I'm glad this student asked me this question because I realize it's a very confusing point for students and you're probably doing your homework right now and getting confused. So I hope you see this um, and this helps you. So um, what we're going to talk about are mainly even indexes. And an index is the little number that you write in the elbow of the radical symbol. And the, so for example, a square root, uh, we don't write a, a number in the elbow, but we know the index is 2. A third root, we write a little 3 fourth root, we write a little four. So we're going to um, really be worried about even indexes. And so in this video, I'm mainly going to talk about square roots because that's the most familiar one. So I just want to remind you, that when we write the square root of a number A, and there's no sign in front of it, there's no minus sign in front of it, we're always talking about a positive number. That's the, called the principal square root. There's no minus sign in front, so we know there are two numbers that we can square, to, and one's positive, one's negative, and we can get A when we square them. But if we write this radical symbol without a, a minus sign in front, we're talking about the positive one. So for example, we write the square root of 4, we, need, we mean positive 2. If we write the square root of 9, we mean positive 3. If we wanted the negative one, we would put in a minus sign in front of it. So negative square root of 4 means negative 2. Now I want to point out we only do this when the index is even. Like a square root, the index is 2. If we had a cubed root, say we had um, the cubed root of negative 8. Now that's got to be a negative number, even though we don't have a minus sign in front of that radical. Which, this is what's so weird, and I think what's so confusing. So we know that the only number that we can take to the third power and get negative 8 is negative 2, right? Because negative 2 to the third power is negative 8. So notice that on the left side, there's no minus sign in front, outside of the radical. But on the right side, we do have a minus sign. We do have a negative number. So that's an odd index, and um, it doesn't matter what, it, whether or not we have a sign, a minus sign or a plus sign or whatever in front of the radical, um, we can sometimes get a negative answer. All right, but with square roots, there has to be a minus sign in front of the radical in order for us to get a negative answer. All right, so let's talk about um, when we have a variable inside and we're squaring that variable inside. So we want to simplify the expression square root of x squared, where x is any real number. We don't know what it is. We don't know if it's positive or negative, but we want to be able to um, simplify that. So many students think, well, that that square root symbol just cancels out the 2 in the exponent and you just should get x. So let's look at a couple of examples. If we take the square root of 2 squared, what do we get? Well, we get the square root of 4 and we just saw the square root of 4 is positive 2. And that's, so it looks like the square root of x squared is x. Similarly, if we take the square root of 3 squared, we get the square root of 9, which is 3. So square root of x squared is x. And suppose we have u, uh, 0 squared. The square root of 0 squared is the square root of 0. And we know that's 0. So it looks like at least for positive numbers and zero, it works. So we can say if x is greater than or equal to zero, 
so it's not a negative number. It's pretty, pretty good guess that the square root of x squared is always going to be x. Okay, but what if x happens to be a negative number? So let's do a couple more examples. So suppose I'm taking the square root of negative 2 squared. Well, negative 2 squared is positive 4, so we're just taking the square root of 4 again. And this has to be a positive number. Remember, if we have a square root with no sign in front of it, we're taking a positive square root. So that's positive 2. So we're not getting negative 2. In fact, what are we getting? We're getting the opposite of negative 2. Okay, so the square root of x squared is the opposite of x in this case. And look at the square root of negative 3 squared. The th square root of negative 3 squared, okay, the negative 3 is being squared inside, that's the square root of 9. And that's a positive number. It's 3. And that's not the thing that we squared. That's the opposite of the thing that we squared. So it looks like if we're taking a negative number and we're squaring that and then taking the square root, we're always going to get the opposite of the number we started with. So the square root of x squared is opposite of x. And I say opposite instead of negative x because it's not necessarily a negative number. When you put a minus sign in front of a variable, it could be a positive number, right? Because if that variable is already negative, putting another minus sign in front of it makes it positive. So when we take the square root of any number, we always get a positive number. We're never going to get a negative number. Same thing with fourth roots, with sixth roots, with eighth roots. If you don't know what it is that you're squaring or what you're taking to the fourth power inside, then you can't say that the fourth root of x to the fourth is x. It might be the opposite of x because it has to be positive. So what we do to make sure it's always positive is we just use the absolute value symbol. So we say this. If x is any real number, positive or negative, and we take the square root of x squared, we're just going to get the absolute value of x. So that always guarantees that we're going to get the positive square root. So it doesn't matter if x is negative. If we take the absolute value of it, we're making sure that we're always going to get the positive answer. So the same thing works for fourth roots, sixth roots, eighth roots, etc. So in general, if x is any real number and our index n is even, then the nth root of x to the n is going to be the absolute value of x. Okay, so the nth root and the nth power don't quite cancel each other out. We have to make sure we have an absolute value um, in our answer. So for example, the fourth root of negative 2 to the fourth is just going to be the absolute value of negative 2, which is 2. And another way to see that is um, if we do it the long way, the fourth root of negative 2 to the fourth is really the fourth root of 16. And we know the fourth root of 16 is positive and it has to be positive 2. So when you're doing problems um, that have an even index, so say you're trying to simplify um, something like this. Uh, we've got the fourth root of, um, let's say, uh, x to the fifth times y. Now I want to simplify that. So underneath the radical, I have um, a power 5 that is higher than my index 4. So that means some of that can come outside. So I can factor that x to the fifth as an x 
times x to the fourth, and I still have a y. So x to the fifth is x to the one times x to the four, right? So now I can call that um, the fourth root of x to the four, I'm breaking it up now using the product rule, times the fourth root of x times y. Now the fourth root of x to the four, according to the rule for even indexes, that's absolute value of x. And then the rest of it stays inside the radical because there's nothing we can do about it. So our final answer is absolute value of x times the fourth root of x times y. Okay, I hope this little video helps. And if you have any other questions, of course, uh, I'll be up for a little while. Um, send me a message in Canvas. Happy homework, homework doing. <laughs>